All right, all right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Well, that was an interesting Austrian Grand Prix, wasn't it? Very, very interesting altogether. You see, what I really want to talk about today is, yeah, Verstappen, total dominance today. Uh, um, what unbelievable result. I mean, the guy even had time for a pit stop at the end. I mean, there was no need, right? But we'll get into that now in a few minutes. Really want to talk about today is Sergio Perez. Now, listen, guys. As you know, I'm I'm not a fan of Sergio Perez. But I can tell you this, I mean, he's fine. I'm not going to be batting for him, um, you know, because I'm a fan or anything. I would bat for him because it's fair to do so. And, you know, guys, it's the same old thing with with with, with Formula One, yeah, especially with Red Bull here, right? If you've seen Netflix Drive to Survive, you remember when Gasly went to Red Bull and do you remember he was like, he was bullied by Red Bull. I mean, they just wanted him out. And I think they realized when they got Gasly on board at Red Bull, that all of a sudden they went, fuck, actually, lads, do you know what? We can get Albon in here now. So I think they were, you know, they were just trying to puck away at him so they could give have a perfect excuse to get rid of him. Okay? And they were, oh, Gasly doesn't have, the, doesn't have it. Blah, 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 blah. They were screwing him around, Gasly, and trying to bully him, dominate him, and then eventually they have a perfect reason to kick him out. Oh, and look who it is! Albin with some sponsorship money. <laughs> but I mean, like, it, I totally understand where Red Bull are coming from, because you need the sponsors on board, right? Totally understand that. But you know what? Just be upfront and honest. We can't have you on board anymore, buddy. Sorry, Gasly. We need the sponsorship money. So either way, there's going to be a back a back take here, you know? Like, there's going to be a bad result here, no matter what happens. Now, what's going on with Perez? So, Perez started, what was he, 15th, I think, for the race. So, he did a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. And I even remember somebody came over to me at, uh, the other day because I literally missed out on the last bit of qualifying. I had to replay it because something came up. And somebody said, oh, yeah, Perez, did you see, he's, he's, down in, he's down at the back. I went, oh, okay, okay, what happened? I said, did he crash? They went, no, no, he's, he, just, he just isn't quick enough, you know, he's just, he's not pulling his weight. I went, oh, here we go, here we go. Guys, trust me, Perez does have the chops. He does have the speed. They are slowing him down. And... I always don't understand why either. Now, okay, is it to sell more Red Bull Verstappen t-shirts, hats? Maybe. And does it help the sales if, you know, Verstappen looks, quote, that dominant and that good? Maybe it does sell more hats. I would presume so, actually, if you think about it, you know? Oh, Verstappen, he's unbelievable, yeah. He's the man, he's the man. And everybody wants the number one Red Bull t-shirt or hat. So, in that angle, I get it. Now, they're still slowing him down, and now here comes the fucking backlash. He doesn't have the balls, he doesn't have it, he's battling under the pressure. I mean, Jesus Christ. People are believing it. You see, the problem, guys, guys, is that everybody's saying it over and over again. And the more you say it, the more it's going to be believed after a while. You know, just keep... Pushing that lie, keep pushing that lie, and everybody will believe it. But trust me, guys, it ain't true. Perez, he's on the ball. Now, he did a good race in fairness to him, from 15th up to 3rd. Good result, guys, a very good result. Gotta give it to him there. Um, now, look, does he have one of the better cars? Absolutely. So, if anything, he should be up there. Getting the win, our second. Our max third. Uh, I mean... To even see uh, Verstappen here at the end, Jesus Christ, guys, like, to even have the, I wouldn't even say it's confidence that he came into the to the pit lane. So, guys, if many of you have probably seen, Verstappen has a 23 second leader, it was a 24, and he comes into the pit lane on the second last lap to change tires, put on the soft tires, and go out and try and beat, beat the fastest lap, so then he'd get another point. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, he comes in, he still has 
a three second lead over Leclerc when he re-enters back onto the track. But it was a gamble, guys. There was no need. You know what I mean? There was no need. Like, what if something did happen? What if your car got fucked? What if you, the wheel nut got stuck in the pit lane, taking off the tire, putting the tire back on? It was a big gamble, guys. Very, very big gamble. And I don't know why they're making these, taking these risks. Now, yes, it's, is it worth another point? Well, I would say you gamble that at the start of the, the race. You don't risk the w race win. Now, okay, if he had like a 50 second gap or a minute lead, gap lead, then I'd understand. Then I'd understand because, well, look, okay, guys, if something does happen here, the wheel nut gets tight or whatever, we'll still have enough time to get back on the track. Now, at the same time, what if something completely does fuck up? I just wouldn't risk it, guys. So it is only one point. Now, having said that, you bleed for every point you can get on the track. But you don't put yourself in a position where you're taking this risk on the second last lap. Just get the win. Just try your, heart, try your best to try and get the fastest lap. If we do do a pit stop, we'll put on the soft tires for you, buddy. Go get it. But to risk it on the second last lap, that, I don't know guys, that seemed a bit careless to me, I have to say. It sh certainly shows a, lot, shows a lot of confidence, that's for sure. Jesus Christ, man. Like, serious confidence. But, was it worth it? Ugh. I don't think it was. I really don't think it was. So the sprint shootout, that was interesting. You had Verstappen Perez, easy 1-2 for Red Bull. And a 1-3 then for them today. Perez just didn't have enough room, didn't have enough time to get up to Leclerc. Uh, would, he have t would he have taken Leclerc if he had enough time? Uh, he, was he was 17 behind, so he would have needed a really, really good pit stop, not get caught in traffic, which he did. Uh, and I think he could have possibly then got him. Now, uh, let me see. Verstappen, Perez... And Carlos Sainz were the top three in the sprint. Now, eight points, seven points for Perez, six points then for Carlos Sainz in third. So I like I like the um, I like the sprint shootout because it does. I think it's in 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 many ways it's a very technical um, part of Formula One because you do commit to the sprint shootout like it's the start of a normal Grand Prix. And what it does is it gives you an idea of the balance of the car. Now, the thing is, if your car is not right, if your car is not balanced at the start of a Grand Prix, it ain't going to get more balanced as you go through the race. Now, to be fair, if you've got the wrong tires on, you could get a bit of, a bit of an unbalance. But, I mean, we're talking, guys, like general balance now of the car. You really need to have it sorted on fucking lap one. Like, if you're struggling on in the sprint shootout with a bad balanced car, it ain't going to get any better when you go through the race. So it's a very, I think it's very, very good for them, for car setup-wise, finding out what a good set of tires is like as well, right? So, in fact, I would even think if the teams are smart enough, as I think they are, and I'm sure they are, they're using the sprint shootout not just for the eight points. They're thinking ahead. They're going to try maybe a, perhaps a different setup. Because at the end of the day, on the Friday, the qualifying is for the race. So, yes, you do want to, of course, win the sprint shootout and get as many points, the eight points as possible. But you can definitely start experimenting with things. Now, same setup applies for the race. I think so. But it's definitely, it's definitely a good mechanical tryout, guys. That's for sure. Um... And it's obviously good, good fun to watch, isn't it? I think a lot of people do enjoy the sprint shootout. It's, um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, good. it's fun this year, definitely fun. Um, let's have a look, guys. Is there any latest news? What else do we have? So, okay, it was a bit of a boring Grand Prix, a little bit, wasn't it? it was, but hey, uh, our hearts, guys. 
lot of sh uh, call out to the. Um, I'm just going to look up his name here again. The guy who got killed, uh, 18 year old, lost his life at Spa. Dutch driver Delano van Hoff killed at Spa Frankenchamps. Um, I know the track, I've been there, I know it very well. And he lost his life in a car. 18 years of age, so honestly, my, my, heart's, my heart is, goes out to the parents, uh, family members. <sighs> horrific, horrific. 18 years of age, Jesus Christ. 18 years of age, my God. Another man down. Man. Well, this is the risk we take, guys, as racing drivers. It could happen to any one of us. I mean, I got out alive. It's tough. I've had some moments. So, anyway. Thoughts, prayers, hearts go out to this young man's family. Um... So look, okay, let's uh, let let let's move it on a bit, a little bit, guys. Um, so okay, any other news, guys? Well, um, there isn't really. Like we've got Silverstone coming up now in the next few weeks. Silverstone's gonna be, I think, definitely interesting. Obviously, we've got Hamilton. He's gonna be gunning for a win if he can, or at very least a podium at his home track. Norris is going to be the same, obviously. Two English boys out there. Russell will want to improve. He'll want to get a win in, of course. Uh, I think Verstappen and Perez will be right there and thereabouts. And I think they're going to give it to Perez because for some reason they, as far as I remember here, don't quote me, but I think they really like to see Perez do well at Silverstone for some reason. It's almost like they, they, they give it to him, you know? Now, let's see this weekend. Maybe I'm thinking of some other track, but I'm pretty sure. So, I think Silverstone is going to be a very mechanical tryout for the teams. Now, I think Adrian Newey with the Red Bull, he's got that car clocked anyway. So, if there's any updates for any new drivers, Silverstone would be definitely a good one. It's the heart of motor racing, really, England, guys. You know, that's where motor racing started, really. You know, it's, it's, like, the, it's like the St. Andrews of golf. You know, so Silverstone's going to be very, very interesting. I think um, Verstappen is going to be right up there. Now, guys, if you have a look at the Formula 1 championship here, Verstappen's on 203. Perez is on 133. Jesus Christ. 70 points, guys. Like, he can literally sit at home for the next two races, Verstappen. Literally sit at home. Not show up. And he's still in the lead. Now, Obviously, he's not going to do that. He can't risk that. He wants to get the championship sewn up as fast as he can. Can Perez do anything about him? It's going to be very, very hard to know. I don't think Red Bull are going to give him the gear, the equipment, to keep with Verstappen. I, I honestly don't think they are. I think he's going to definitely win every now and then, a couple more races this year. But I don't see them giving it to them. I just, I just don't see Perez getting the, the gear. So, any of you Perez fans out there, I wouldn't be holding your breath for this one. Alonso, he's on 121 points. So he's almost almost 80 points behind. This is 78 points. So he's got a mountain to climb. Perez has got a mountain to climb. Even if they gave him the equipment, fucking Perez has got a mountain to climb. Now, listen. All it takes is three races. Verstappen has a nightmare. Now, of course, Verstappen has to show up for those three races too. Or, sorry, Perez has to show up for those three races to score as many points as he can. It's looking good. It's looking very, very good for Verstappen here. Their confidence is there. Their, their reliability is there. Their speed is there. Their balance is there. Everything is just ticking the boxes here for Red Bull. And um, incredible domination. I think that's Verstappen. That's 42 wins, I think, now. He's just overtaken Senna's uh, victories. Um, so, you know, i got to give it to him. Well done for, for, for getting those amount of wins. Um, and Red Bull are just dominating. Can anyone take them down? Can Mercedes show up at Silverstone? Can Hamilton pull something out of the bag? Can Russell pull something out of the bag? Can Norris pull something out of the bag? Can anyone pull anything out of the bag <laughs> against Red Bull? It's going to be hard to see. So, guys, 
we'll leave it there today. A nice short and sweet podcast today. Um, yeah, well, hopefully the race will get a bit. Uh, the racing will get a little bit better going forward. Hopefully, as they say. Um, I think Silverstone could be definitely interesting. It's a very fast track. Now, we'll obviously do a preview before that race weekend coming up soon. But it's a very fast track. Um, you've got ultra-high downforce levels with the cars. They have to because the track is so bloody quick that you need all the downforce you can get. Now, I would think they're going to probably run about 85%. So let's say not all the downforce they can get, but they need as much grip levels as they can get in those in those uh, corners out the back. Uh, it's going to be very, very important for them. So, yeah, let's just leave it there, guys. And um, congratulations to Red Bull. Congratulations to Verstappen. And uh, hopefully Fernando, our boy, can pull some magic out of his asshole for a Silverstone. Talk to you later, guys.